Welcome to the Marvel Cinematic University Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony Canton III, and we are here to do a movie, if you could believe it or not, that we have not done in the history of this show. The show started in January of 2018, and somehow, some way, we missed Deadpool 2. So that's what we're doing, we're doing right now. And you know what's not dead and what's not in a pool? The MC University Patreon. Patreon.com slash MC University Pod, where you can get our bonus content, such as Good Beef, such as Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, and subscriber mailbag, get into the Discord, all for $3. Appreciate your support in the meantime. And if you like these wonderful faces that you see on the screen right now, subscribe like comment all of those things on youtube and make sure that you five star the podcast on all platforms and with that being said let me introduce the super producer jake christie jake how are you i'm doing well i thought this was going to be a bonus episode until right before so i have my my shirt so i'm buttoned I'm, I, I i'm showing too much chest on the video so i gotta button up one more oh i, I love how we make shift things at the very last second but we ride by this the was just our... me this was just me not knowing what we were doing this is me that's, just being a bad at my job totally <laughs> fine we that's totally fine we ride by the seat of our pants on this show and yes let's talk about deadpool 2 uh directed by david leach and i think the thing that i come away from watching this movie again was one holy shit I didn't realize how much that this movie has aged poorly in my eyes. Yeah. And then B, man, I'm glad that Hugh Jackman's coming back because it seems like Ryan Reynolds really wanted Hugh Jackman to come back. Yeah. This movie, de- I didn't, I, I liked not love this movie in the theater. And I really hadn't seen it in full since. I had seen bits on cable. Um, and rewatching it, like, a lot of it feels, the, a lot of the humor feels trapped in the 2010s. Like, very twitter 2010s humor like honestly the whole beyond the fact that he is a piece of shit as a person the whole tj miller humor is like that was a moment and i think the less like it we really screwed up as a society think letting him think that he was good at being in movies and tv shows like he really is like every scene he's in just is like really because some of ryan reynolds jokes are a little annoying but like the way the TJ Miller's delivery just it really feels like he thinks he's better than the movie at yes. all times. Yes. In a way where it's like, yeah, Bill Murray can feel like he's better than Ghostbusters because he's Bill Murray. That's what makes his character charming. You're TJ Miller. You're not better than Deadpool. Like, what the hell's wrong with you? And so, like, <laughs> really a lot of those a lot of the scenes were like a lot, they had a lot of the big riffs, which I think is what Deadpool is kind of known for in a lot of ways. The the riffs, the fact that the riffing is not really the problem, it's just like the jokes just feel really 2018. Honestly, really 2016, if anything. Oh, yeah, because, I mean, you get Batman, Superman references, DC references, all those things, and and uh, different things along those lines. And, I mean, from a story standpoint, so I, I kind of, I was not a fan of them killing Vanessa. Yeah, it's not my it's not my favorite thing because I think one of the best parts of the first Deadpool mm-hmm. is their relationship because it feels mm-hmm. genuine and and mm-hmm. it feels like it's a lot of fun. So them killing her off the bat and then kind of making this very uh, comic hero like mm-hmm. or anti hero I should say into this depressed person, but yet he's still making jokes at the mm-hmm. same time. It's just very. Like, it didn't work for me. And also, oh, my God, that kid, that kid who plays Russell, mm. he's so annoying. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, he, Julian Dennison, he had just done Hunt for the Wilder People, Taika Waititi's movie. And I think that, like, I don't know, because, like, he's not that bad in Godzilla vs. Kong. He's better in that. But I think that he really is kind of just a little green. Like, he just feels like he's not comfortable being in a movie this big. You know, like, a, a, the jokes just feel, like, so forced, and, like, it it just feels way more juvenile than it needs to, um, and, yeah, I, that that also really didn't work for me, and, you know, I, I feel bad, because, like, like I said, like, I've liked him in other movies, but it, it just, like, I think, I think it's similar to the T.J. Miller thing, it's, like, these, these type of jokes when they don't work they really don't work because they're like really long they're long-winded they're usually crude and so like if they don't hit you wasted like 10 seconds and you're a bit grossed out and julian dennison just does not deliver them that well honestly yeah and it's kind of funny because i remember um he was in 
there was this Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn uh, Santa movie. The Christmas Chronicles. There you go. The Christmas Chronicles. That, 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 that I happened to see both of them because my, my wife really liked them. And I remember he was in the second movie. He was the evil elf. And I, and I couldn't stand him in that too. So I was like, wait a minute. That's right. He was in the Christmas Chronicles. Jesus yeah. Christ. And, <sighs> and, and I think that like... Obviously, the character is supposed to be a little shithead. Like, it's part of the, the, yes. the story. But, like, he's just... Like, the problem is he's comes off like he's, like, a Reddit poster in a way that, like... I mean, I'm actually not... I'm not really rooting for him redemp- his redemption that much. Like, it's it's not... I should feel like, oh, this kid really deserves a second chance. And I'm like, hey, this guy kind of seems annoying. Like, what the hell? And, like, not in, like, an endearing way. I, I really think that, like, the movie, I think, would work a lot better if you had a more sympathetic performance. And he still is making dumb jokes or whatever. I think the movie would work way better. But at mm-hmm. the moment, it's like, you you honestly forget that they're doing everything for this kid because he's such a non-sympathetic. Like, you, just, you don't care that much whether or not he gets saved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not something that you really look to in terms of just, like, overall feeling any types of good about it. Um... Even then, it's it, it is kind of scary to me how much I didn't like this movie. It's kind of yeah. like it's just like ah. I mean the thing about Deadpool is Deadpool's humor is it, it ages poorly. I think is kind of the problem with it. It's very topical. It's very shock based. Like the moment you hear it, it's not as good as it used to be. Like that's in that and that's kind of and I and I also think that like I don't know. I, I think that. The storyline they're telling is so emotional in a way that the movie has no space for whatsoever. Like you mentioned, mm-hmm. like he's making jokes and stuff like that. And it's like, I actually don't need Deadpool to be on a sad revenge tour because he's already an antihero. Like he already is willing to kill people. So like it feels kind of unnecessary to make him this all be about vengeance or whatever or like trying to find a place. And Vanessa was already, uh, you know, kidnapped at the end of Deadpool 1. Like it just feels like, We've already done this. He's already an anti-hero. The fr- you know, uh, it's funny. The first movie, in my opinion, still holds up actually, mm-hmm. and it's kind of incredible, like how much of a uh, downgrade this one is. Uh, I was, even like just from the standpoint of just bringing in certain characters. I mean, even Josh Brolin as Cable mm-hmm. was just like is very, very one note for the mm-hmm. most part, and. Yeah, man, that's like, it's just so weird to think about it now. <laughs> After six years have passed, mm-hmm. uh, since so seeing in the in the theater is like, ha ha, you laugh at this and you laugh at this, and then it's like, oh wow, everything has changed. Yeah, I, I think that like it it, ho- it holds together worse because it just has a worse backbone, and so like if the jokes aren't keeping your attention, which they won't on any rewatch, and especially when you're at home and you're not in a theater with other people, then like the actual emotional through line is not there in that like that's the thing that you always worry with deadpool is that like is the jokiness undercutting any of the stakes of the story and like i think the first one it doesn't really and in this one it it does and it's like okay like i i think when you ever have a character who is irreverent Mm -hmm. it is imperative for you to cleanly establish what they actually care about and make them actually care about it and in this it's like He is unable to be completely, unable to be, you know, more serious about anything. And so it's like, okay, he's saying he cares about this kid, but he's also saying it in like that Ryan Reynolds half joke tone. And so like, I'm just taking his word, like I'm taking his word that he cares about the kid because the plot requires him to care about the kid. But I don't actually believe that Ryan Reynolds does. No, not at all. Not at all. I I think... So the action stuff, the action stuff is fine. I don't think there's anything like, I don't think there's anything that really super stands out. I the most fun mm-hmm. that, I, that I felt the movie was when they did the whole, the, the X Force stuff. That yeah. was that was the most fun, and yeah, it's just that sequence still held up as something fun. like that is a very funny idea that, cool. that you introduce the whole team and you kill them all off. That is a very funny idea to do in a Deadpool movie because you really can't do that in any other superhero movie, and so like that still worked. You know, a lot of like the, the action that works for me a lot was the domino stuff. I think that that's still really oh yeah, inventive. she was like, yeah, Sassy Beats was um, really good actually. I but yeah, and, but I just think like the the inventiveness of those sequence, particularly the fight in the orphanage with you know all the different shit, people tripping over stuff, like that's really fun. Um, 
but yeah, no, like it's it just it doesn't really stand out. It is it's very anonymous in a in a way that it really shouldn't be. And whereas the, and the first one isn't. Um, yeah, like there are things I like. I didn't dislike watching it. Really, I was like, oh, this is fine. But like, it's not. It didn't make me more excited for Deadpool and Wolverine. Not that I'm not excited for Deadpool and Wolverine, but it didn't make me more excited. Yeah, be, yeah, because I we'll get to it later. But I feel like that's gonna have a completely different feel for it. And you know, just thinking about the time that this was released, like this was smack dab in the middle of uh, when Infinity War came out, mm. and and uh, what did we get? We got uh, Ant Man and the Wasp that year. Mm. It was a just uh, yeah, what a what a time for for Fox Marvel. Like again, like this was kind of towards the end of uh, what Fox Marvel was, and. I'm trying to go back through some scenes that that I, that I did like. Some of the stuff in the jail was was mm-hmm. was fine enough mm-hmm. when he when he told the the uh, the white dude with the braids, <laughs> "What is your superpower? Mm-hmm. Uh, cultural appropriation." Mm-hmm. That was pretty good. And um, the yeah the he, the stuff with Colossus felt forced at the beginning yeah. a little bit. Yeah, I, like the neg- I like the Negus on Teenage Warhead and Yukio stuff. I think that I wish funny. they would use them more. Yeah. I, they were good. I yeah. like that. They're, they definitely... I remembered them being in more of the movie because they're so good. Like, the Yukio bit is really funny. Like, the idea of she's such a cheery person and she likes Wade a lot. And <laughs> Negus on Teenage Warhead doesn't. Like, that is a really good comedy bit. And they only do it for, like, three minutes of the movie. And it's like... I don't know. I I I just think that the, the chemistry between Negasan and Teenage Warhead and Deadpool is much more interesting to me than the chemistry between him and Colossus. Like Colossus is fine, but Colossus is just like it's the same thing as the last movie. It's just like you got to be a grown up, you have to be you can be X Men, and it's like that's we said that was what the last movie was. <laughs> yes, and um and yeah, I think continuing that theme, like the first movie had stuff that you could have kind of built on there, and I don't know, it just felt like they were. <sighs> I don't even want to even say. I don't think anybody was mailing it in. I felt hmm. like they just they just tried to do the same movie. Yes, I think that the the biggest the biggest problem is that it it feels like it's not a step up in any way. Like in terms of action, it's not really. Like I, I'm sure it's. It co- I mean, it definitely did cost more money, but like even like I'll say this: if the villain was not played by Josh Brolin and not a character that's famous from the cartoon he would be considered an anonymous villain. Like, the, one, the, the biggest problem with Deadpool 1 is that Ed Screen's character, whatever hell's name is, uh, Ajax, I think, um, yeah. is incredibly anonymous. One of the most anonymous comic book villains ever, right? <laughs> and it's not helped by the fact he's played by Ed Screen, um, a man who got recast on Game of Thrones and is one of the best recast decisions I've ever seen in anything. Um, and, but, like, once again, if this guy was not played by Josh Brolin, as someone who, like, didn't know who Cable was, I'd be like, wow, pretty crazy Deadpool has two anonymous villains. Because... Josh Brolin, who's an actor I love, does yeah. basically nothing in this. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. It's, it's very one note. You don't really get yeah. You don't really get much. Like it's very. I don't know. I mean, he maybe he was too much of a maybe he was too much in the Thanos mode with the with the with the mocap and, and stuff. And one of the big problems of this movie is not big problems, mm-hmm. but like a thing I observed. I think when I left the theater was this movie is in a lot of way it is incredibly similar to the much better movie Looper by Ryan Johnson. About a guy who goes back in time to kill someone who has fire powers, who ends up killing his family. He goes back in time, and the movie ends by a character making a sacrifice in order to, in- instead of killing the kid, makes the kid not become evil. It's it's a simple, plot. and I think that obviously movies have similar plots all the time. I'm not like saying oh we stole like that's dumb, but I think the thing that that comparison is useful for is Bruce Willis gives a genuinely great performance in Looper as a man who you who you can. Uh, the thing of, I'll, I'll put it this way. Bruce Willis lets you believe that a man who was once like a decent person mm-hmm. is willing to murder a like six year old child because you can tell on it, like the pain that he feels that like, this is what he feels like he needs to do. At no moment does Josh Brolin really sell like the thing he doesn't sell is I know this seems unreasonable that I'm trying to kill a kid, but he killed my family. He's just too business about it. And I'm like, this is a revenge tour. Why are you yeah. acting like this is like a, a, an anonymous job? Especially when you have the complete other opposite end of the spectrum where you got Wade at the beginning, like basically committing suicide a bunch of times um, after Vanessa gets killed. And you have that juxtaposed with somebody who also lost their family. Mm -hmm. It's just like very matter of fact about everything. Yeah, Like, 
it just it really just does not feel like he feels like an assassin sent by a company and not a, someone on a passion project right and that i think really it also makes the end worse when he like has a face turn because it's like i'm not that sympathetic to you to begin yeah, with because like because yeah. like you didn't seem like if he had and and it, people might say like this would be you know less interesting but i disagree but like if he had a moment where he earnestly was like, please, seriously, these, these my wife and child were everything to me. And if, if he took this from you, like, but the fact he doesn't try to justify it at all, it's just like, I think they're doing it because they don't want to seem too, they don't want to be too emotional. They want to seem above it and all that. Like, that's kind of the, the tone they're trying to do, but it's like, then you can't, you can't have the ending you have if you're trying to act above it beforehand. Well, then you're doing the constant weight is in kind of the abyss trying to talk to vanessa on yeah. a really serious emotional note you know what movie did all the you know what movie did this bit really much better uh f9 the fast saga <laughs> <laughs> what van almost dies from what i'm talking about yeah it's much and, better and even um even rocket at the yeah. uh, guardians of the galaxy volume yep. three yeah. yeah that's another example of that so yeah i it's it, it it's tough like to it's so it's so weird as you juxtapose this movie to um 2018 MCU films. It's like wow. Yeah. This this movie movie. really does feel like from a different time in in a way that like is, you know like it it just feels it also this feels very much like it's from peak Ryan Reynolds. Like obviously Ryan Reynolds is still an ever present force, but like this felt this is like the moment where he's like ah, Deadpool is me where people wanted like Deadpool to host SNL which like a character hasn't hosted SNL since like the 80s so what the hell are you talking about um <laughs> and a character has don't get me wrong like father, I think Father Guido Sarducci did host SNL but like the it, it feels very high in its own supply in terms of like every joke is going to be the funniest thing that these are all it, it feels like the movie's conscious of the fact that a lot of jokes from Deadpool 1 became memes and they're trying to make a bunch of other memes yeah yeah, yeah, that's a bit that's a big part of it too. Um yeah, if there's yeah, there's not really much to talk about with this movie but just besides the fact that it doesn't hit the same as the first one did. And um I mean even you get into the post credit stuff with the time travel which obviously leads into what we're going to get with Deadpool and Wolverine yeah. and the TVA and stuff like that. Beyond that, I'd say Deadpool 2 was um I mean well, it, it did introduce an important we... character. It introduced an important character of Peter um yes, you know one, gonna, one of my favorite one of the again. one of the best characters i just love him so much um you know shouts to rob delaney i love that they, they brought him back uh, <laughs> like I, I just love it in the pre in the uh in the in the um trailer for deadpool wolverine i'm like peter's back okay all things are right in the world um but i'm glad he got saved yeah for for sure that and um to your point earlier yes that x-force everybody getting killed uh terry cruz getting <laughs> and the bit where brad pitt plays the vanisher you know oh that's a nice little cameo yeah. or i love the cameo i don't know if you realize this do you did you recognize when cable comes back from the future do you know who the two rednecks are wait who are they they're uh matt damon and alan tudyk Wait, how did I miss the, that? Well, because he's wearing like prosthetics and stuff. But the fat one who's talking about using wet wipes is Matt Damon, <laughs> and then Alan Tudyk. You know Alan Tudyk; he's the other one. Oh, what the hell? Okay. Yeah. Will, and my I'll... favorite thing about that, and this is for this is for referencing a movie I don't think you've seen, but in the credits, Matt Damon is not credited as Matt Damon; he's credited as Dicky Greenleaf, which is the name of Jude Law's character who Matt Damon steals the identity of in *The Talented Mr. Ripley*, which I think is very fun. Mm-hmm. And that's when uh, I fair. That's Matt Damon's best performance ever. Just putting on record for anyone who wants to know. Uh, and so <laughs> I'm. Uh, I love oh, that movie's a masterpiece. You you if you ever have like two and a half hours, it's a long movie. Great movie because it's it's also like it's Matt Damon, Jude Law, Gwyneth Paltrow, Kate Blanchett, all looking hot in Italy. It's great. I am making note of this right yeah. now. Um, but no, I mean it's like like I said, it is. There are fun things in it, like. There are fun moments in it, but it actually works. It functions a lot better as five or six scenes to look up on YouTube than it does an actual movie. One hundred percent, I couldn't agree with you more on that. And yeah, so the so I was gonna say the post credit scenes. Obviously, Deadpool goes back in time, saves Vanessa, uh, kills Ryan Reynolds, mm-hmm. and, <laughs> and then kills the X Men Origins version of Deadpool, which oh my god, that's another movie. Jesus. I actually watched the movie for the first time a couple weeks ago, like uh, actually two months really? ago. Really? Oh. Yeah, because I never saw it when it came out, and because I heard it was bad. It is not good. It's not as bad as I have been told. Yeah, it is it's a not, functional movie. 
It's not five percent on Rotten Tomatoes. No, because like the thing about it is, I was led to believe like this is a disaster. Like the thing about it is, the problem with it is, is that it was made. It was like a standalone Wolverine movie. But if that movie came out in like two thousand three, around the same time as like Daredevil, it's it's like it's better than like Daredevil. You know what I mean? It's like better than Elektra. Here's the other thing that happened with that movie. Before uh, um it came out, there was a heavy leak, yeah. and the leak had unfinished cgi shots yeah but people were just like i'm gonna watch this anyway so many people watched that movie yeah i heard about that that it didn't it did not help the no the it's it's it. a dumb movie and it's not very good but like i was really expecting to be like incompetent and it's just like no it's not incompetent. it's just like a bad action movie is what it is but yeah uh but no the whole and the deadpool stuff in it is like you understand why ryan reynolds made it his life's quest to play deadpool correctly <laughs> Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was just so ridiculous. Also, but... it introduced my favorite fun fact, which is that there have been two actors to play De- uh, Wolverine in live action. Who are they? Oh, well, the obvious sh- one. Well, yeah, we know Hugh, and, um, oh, wait, what am I missing here? The kid What's... who plays him as a child in X-Men Origins of Wolverine oh. is Australian uh, singer Troy Sivan. <laughs> <laughs> so technically Hugh Jackman and Troy Sivan are the only people to play James and, Logan Howlett on screen. And they still have not relented on uh, Hugh Jackman. And that leads us to Deadpool and Wolverine as we get ready to see it. If you're listening to this now, later this week, for anybody who's going to the theaters and and, and stuff like that, I think it's it, this, the, this early uh, press tour... And a lot of the interviews that that Jackman has done so far, I think you could say, like, it's safe to say that this, I don't know what brought him back, but there was something that made him feel passionate enough to to don the claws once again. And uh, I I think it's pretty cool that he seems so passionate and also happy that he's doing the project. I think the big thing is the vibe I get is that Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman and more, I think very importantly, and Sean Levy, are all really good friends. Mm-hmm. And so I think that that is a major selling point. And I, cause I also think that Hugh Jackman, you, I get the vibe from the interviews that he is enjoying, just enjoying making movies. Cause he's, you know, like think about how shitty so many of these X-Men projects must've been. Brian Singer's famously director. Who's barely ever there. You know, he like was like really shitty, you know, he's horrible to work with. Um, and then Brett Ratner was like asleep behind the monitors with his hand down his pants the entire time. Um, and like, you can understand why he would be like, I'm done playing Wolverine. It's been a miserable experience. And then after doing it, where he gets to work with two of his best friends playing Wolverine, you can understand why he'd be like, oh, th- I actually enjoy this. This is fun to do. I mean, I hope that that keeps being the case, but yeah, I, I, I'm choosing to believe that that's what it is. And it's not just uh, mucho dinero, poor Hugh. Like, I really yeah. hope that that's not what it, it doesn't feel. I, I'll say it doesn't feel much. like, because also he feels like he has enough like money. It. Yes. Yes. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like it at all. Um, I mean, he even said himself that he thinks that this is the best take. And I mean, this is including most people love Logan. So um, yeah. he, th- he thinks that this is the best take on the character. So that in- that intrigues me. And uh, yeah, like, I mean, just the general vibe. You, you always want to know where they're going to take some of these mm-hmm. things. Just some of the casting choices using the TVA is mm-hmm. interesting. Um, is there anything that you look forward to when watching this movie? I mean, I'm looking forward to whatever, like, the big cameo scenes are. Like, those are going to be fun. And I think that, like, the good thing about ha- about this being a Deadpool movie is that, like, unlike, you know, with Doctor Strange or whatever, if this movie just halts its plot for ten minutes and just does a bunch of cameos, that's not really going to be a problem with a Deadpool no. movie. Like, you know what I mean? Whereas, like, if the scene in Doctor Strange, like, actually had all the cameos that people wanted, that would have been bad for the movie. You know what I mean? Like, I think that that's the thing that you and I are in agreement of when people are like, why isn't every alternate version of every character? It's like, because the movie would have ground to a halt. Iron Man. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, it, it actually barely, it barely functions as it does. It's a movie held together by duct tape as it is. But, like, whereas, like, Deadpool can just stop to do that. Like, who cares? Um, and so, like I said about... You know, I think I said this when they first announced like what this project was going to be. I'm ex- very glad that they're using Deadpool as the property to merge these new things they got 
because he can just say what is actually going on. Because I think a thing in this day and age where like everyone in the grandmother knows who owns what, knows rights, knows this and the other, things that people shouldn't know, things that only I should know and be a dork about. The fact that everyone knows these things means that I think that audiences are not, they just want to get it over with. You know, like I, I don't actually think, it, it's like why, you know, the, the we saw in the trailer for Brave New World where, you know, uh, Harrison Ford says, "You, what do you think about the new look or whatever?" It's right. like, let's just get it over with. Like, let's not. We're all adults. Everyone knows William Hurt died. We're all adults. Everyone knows that 21st Century Fox's film library was bought by Disney. Like, we we, we get it. Yes, yes, and yeah. I even I actually look forward to the heavy handedness of of what Deadpool is going to say regarding that whole situation. And I mean, you mentioned the cameos. There's a lot of there's a lot of fun rumored ones, and excited to see what those look like. And just excited to see what uh, Emma Corrin does as as uh, Charles Xavier's evil sister. Like yeah. that's that's gonna be fascinating. Because I'll be as someone who didn't watch The Crown, I'm not familiar with their work, but I understand that they are very good at playing Princess Diana. So, and and I feel like whenever the MCU can get an exciting young actor, I think that that, that excites me because especially now when it feels like understandably a lot of exciting young actors are not saying yes to the MCU that like getting an exciting young actor and giving them like not a boring part at all. Like this is a, because it, what kind of sucks is when you have an interesting star and you say like, okay, you're going to play boring lead person. It's like, okay. But like, and, and then like the exciting characters are all reserved for ex- very experienced actors. It's like, no, let, this new person play this creature because as I can tell from the like the uh, trailers and from what I know about the character, like this is there's some crazy shit that can be done. Yes, yes, and uh, some very meaty scenes to chew on there. And I want to I want to see the angle of I want to see uh, Wolverine's angle. Like, what is that going to be? How do you bring a different version of uh, Wolverine back into this story? And see how they kind of explain away the Logan portion of it because it sounds like that's what they they are going to do. So, so whatever that looks like for any Logan fans who are just like, why are you decanonizing Logan? And it's like, okay, don't worry, man. Hugh Jackman's back for this one. Let's have some fun. Let's, let's, I'm all for the fun. Let's give it also the fun. Pa- not to be dismissive, but pardon me when I hear complaints that that are like, oh, I'm sorry. Can you actually put the fries in the bag? I actually got to go. Like that's like. <laughs> Like, it's like, come on. I I understand it on some level, but it's like, Logan's still there. Like, you know. Yeah, he's there. That's what counts. I think folks, folks have always looked to Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. And the fact that we didn't, we thought it was over and he came back again. Now, granted, we'll see what they decide to do after this and Mm -hmm. whenever they introduce the the actual uh, new X-Men mm-hmm. and what they decide to do with uh, with good old Hugh. Mm-hmm. And I have a very sneaky suspicion that this is not the last ride no. for Hugh here. It's um, really crazy that when Hugh Jackman started playing Wolverine, his, he first appeared as Wolverine in a movie when I was four years old. And he will be playing Wolverine, I would suspect, into my 30s. <laughs> like, and, and, yep. and honestly, I don't, you know, Good for him. If he want, like, if he, that's always the thing is like, if he wants to do it. Yeah. As long as he's happy, as long as he's happy playing the character and, you know, he believes he could get a lot of mileage out of it continuing. Yeah. Then I don't mind. Um, the convert that, the, that conversation can occur down the road whenever they decide to do something different with a different version of it. Yeah. When, whenever, whenever, uh, the, whatever his, whenever the Australian version of Balco, whenever it gets rated, then they could decide. <laughs> Sorry. That's great. Deadpool and Wolverine. That was a Deadpool level joke right there. Question. Uh, this is just a side note. I tweeted this before. When are we going to get like the big short style comedy movie about Balco? Like that's, I mean, that would be a good movie. Anyway, copyright J. Christie. Don't, no one else make that. Yes. Um, I mean, who will we get to play like the, the main folks behind it? Like, I mean, cause the, you, I, I would make it much more about the actual dudes. Like I don't want it to be like a Barry Bonds biopic. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I forget. Like the main guy I think was like, I think he was Afro Latino, right? Or was he just Latino? Um, so I'm trying to think. I can't, I can't remember his name. Yeah. But, but um, they were idiot. Like they were like throwing their steroid shit out in like a public trash can, like real 
real dumb people. So like oh that's. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, if Balco, by the way, was that was a steroid company that Barry Bonds used. Um, and uh, I just always think about it. I feel like we, we talk about HGH too much. We're not talking about the clear, cream and the clear. Nah, it just rem- it just reminds me listening to WFAN back in the day, and mm-hmm. I listened to uh, Steve Summers uh, in, in the evenings, and he he called Barry Baroid. And ba- uh, yep, I remember I remember Baroid. <laughs> um, oh yeah, the guy's name was Victor Conti. Um, ah, yes, Victor Conti. Oh yes. yes yeah. Yes. Oh no, sorry, he was Italian. Victor Conti. You don't know. You don't know if he's if that's Latino or Italian. Oh boy, we got a Mike Tarico situation. Well, no, oh yeah, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, man, uh, no, and that was freaking that because that was when I came up watching baseball. I mean, I remember there was ba- there was Bayroid and there was Aroid, obviously. Oh uh, yeah, oh my god, yes, yes, yeah. all those times yeah. back in. Well, remember when Sammy Sosa forgot how to speak English? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry about this tangent, guys. Oh, it's great. It's great. No, no, you if you take me back to. Mid nineties to end of nineties to into two thousands baseball. That is, I mean, that is my life. Mid two thousands baseball is what I remember back because I, I remember like when I was a kid, my dad and I would watch baseball tonight every night, and like so I just have so many memories of like, you know, I don't have like really great. I don't have a ton of memories about frolicking outside and playing in the woods, but I have like memories about how Xavier Nady made me feel when he's playing right field for the Mets. <laughs> Xavier Nady, that's a, oh my <laughs> god, that's a great name. <laughs> so many good names uh i can man, still I, spell doug Mankavich. like that's how my brain oh started. <laughs> man that's another one. Oh, so good so good i remember that i you know unfortunately when the yankees uh blew the the, the 3-0 lead to the red Sox, yeah. one of their setup men was uh paul quantrill oh of course paul quantrill yeah oh man and then also they had um they had a, they had two setup men for for mariano they had him and they had Tom Flash Gordon. Oh, Flash Gordon was one of the guys who played for like 20 years. He was around forever. Yeah, he was on. Yeah, he played for so many teams, too. Yeah. God. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, look. Yeah, we, we, this, this is becoming a Remembering Some Guys episode. We got to. We, we, yeah, a lot, a, lot of, a lot of baseball as we get ready for Deadpool and Wolverine, which we will have a, a complete review of that mm-hmm. movie uh, mm-hmm. next week. On uh, next so, Tuesday, I believe, right? We're recording next Monday. Um, well, yeah, we're, yes, that will be out yeah. next Tuesday. So yes, it will be next Monday that we mm-hmm. will record and, uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing what that movie brings. It'll mm-hmm. be the talk of the town for, for at least that weekend. So we'll see what mm-hmm. happens. Hopefully it does really well and hopefully it's a good movie. May, yeah. m- most importantly. So yep. with that being said, Jay Christie, where can we follow you, sir? You can follow me on Twitter and on TikTok at the Jay Christie. Like I've been saying, I've been doing the fun series of TikToks about tweets. So you can follow me on Twitter or you can follow me on TikTok about Twitter. There you go. But I, who, who, who's to say I'm addicted to Twitter? Hey, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Check yeah, check Jake's TikToks like that. That Twitter library thing is starting to take off a little bit. So Yeah, uh, it's a museum of Twitter. No, I'm not being a joke. I just want to make sure that we're branding it correctly. It's yes, 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 yes. Yeah, you got brand- this belongs brand- in a museum. Brand- That's Harrison Ford. Yes, there you go. And, of course, you can follow me on Twitter at AnthonyCanton underscore three. Follow the show on all platforms at MC University Pod. Like I said, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Like, follow, comment, all of those things. Remember, when we get to 250 subscribers, you will be eligible for a chance to get a hashtag washed agenda t-shirt. And, uh, yeah, you, you want to get one of those because the, the shirt's really nice. I, I, I loved wearing it, and uh, I look forward to wearing it again and getting more of the merch as mm-hmm. I can embrace the hashtag Wash Your Gender. You gotta. Yes, absolutely. And yes, and as I mentioned, the Patreon, patreon.com slash Pop for the bonus content. If, if you feel free to take a look at some of the stuff that we've already amassed over the last three years and change, check it out, especially some of the stuff that we've done over the last couple of months. That should be fun. Um, the, the, the boy season has ended by the last, by the, the time you listen to it, this. So I'm going to guess that by the time you listen to this, there might be a boys season yep. recap. So that that's on deck too. So appreciate everybody for listening and supporting at the same time for Jake Christie. I am Anthony Canton the third. This has been Marvel Cinematic University and we will talk to you next time.